spider, which are more like feather leafy, this is stammerous. That's an in invasive species. So they kind of come in here and they're very destructive uh, for the natural habitat. What's happening where it's really humid and a lot of water that you see what's called the cotton trees. We see in German, in the Puppel. Mm -hmm. All right, and so these are the kind of tree, tree. As you walk basically perpendicular away from the river, you come into at some point more open and then really Sonoran lowland desert, which is characterized by saguaros. There's creosotes and then the mesquites give away to mostly ironwood, palo verde, uh, creosote, and then the cacti, which would be choyas, the ones which are really nasty kind of thorns which stick into you, uh, palo verde. Uh, that's, and then even if you go a little higher, I mean, if you, if you have time, you can't just walk, just don't go get lost, right? So they, you can't, it's really difficult to get lost because there's a street here and the river there. Film based on so a model that Walter Schinkel designed. <laughs> Basically, you can make one of these out of a trash can or a bucket in the case of Kevin. And it works just through um, chimney uh, and convection. So there's a vent down at the bottom. When we put the lid on, um, the chimney will uh, release hot air, which will suck oxygen through the bottom and fuel the fire. So we'll put coal around the cage in the center. And it's insulated by the stuff on the outside. And then the scuba tank crucible will be filled with zinc, which will slowly melt. And uh, we'll be able to know that it's ready when like white smoke kind of comes out the top. It's like choosing a pulp. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and so then Kevin will be able to pick this up and pour the molten zinc directly into the, the hole in the ant nest. And um, we'll probably have to do this uh, several times because the size of the crucible versus the size of the nest, which could be significant. Um, so basically, we're just melting metal, pouring it in. Questions? Why, why do you use metal, not any other stuff like concrete or? Um, so concrete actually blows up a little bit once it's uh, when it's hardening. So it's an exothermic reaction too. Yeah. It's kind of like yeah. the same with plaster. So it changes the shape of okay. the architecture a little bit. The metal um, freezes and cools very quickly. So it's really a true, um, true architecture that you get. We also use plumber's foam, uh, blows up a little too much. Okay. Wax is great, plaster is great, but those break into pieces when you excavate them. Okay, and this yeah. is going to be a pretty stable Solid. structure. Yeah, so you can solder the big pieces together, but it'll be, you can use it in a bar fight. So. <laughs> Let's make some of That's good to know. So right now he's adding zinc shavings to the crucible, and he's, you can see that it's firing up. Uh, the charcoal. What's the melting point of, um, of zinc? It's uh, 420 C. 420 C. Oh, yeah, that's a lot more than a little bit. Four. Um, oh, okay. oh, yeah. Um, okay, so the, the metal is melted. Come closer and you can see the oh, molten zinc. This is just an aluminum trash can, so you gotta have, mm. the, you gotta have the ceramic fire blanket to keep the... Oh, it's a fire blanket. Because we can actually, this is the outside of this is just aluminum. So, and we can oh, actually shoot. melt aluminum in this. So, <laughs> you got to do something. To see, the fire blanket provides insulation. Yeah. And then you can see it's wrapped all the way around. Wow. And that, well, the zinc is totally molten. Yeah. We had to scrape all that slag off the top because we caught it on fire. So, there's all this. That's hot. Don't yeah, yeah. That, all this right the bottom won't drop out of the kitchen. That's cool. He's pouring in the molten zinc. Wow. And it's drinking it too. It's going down. Ooh. Well, so just flowing down through the chambers. Pour it in. So it won't go all the way to the bottom. It'll freeze, you know, somewhere near the top. Well, depending on how deep it goes. I mean, we won't lose it at the top, is what I mean. Wow, there's a lot of stuff going in there. Oh, we're getting a blowout over here on my side. You see it? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, what does that mean? It means it's filling a chamber close to the surface and it's mm. pushing the dirt out. Mm. Yeah. So there's multiple exit entrance, which are not open normally. Did you really blow it? All right, well, that's all.
It's like when smog came to the well, to the lonely yeah, mountain. Yeah, that all that it blew something out here. There's gonna be a big mass. Okay, there's gonna be a weird thing. That's okay. <laughs> Bleeder. Okay, so now it needs to cool down, and then. Well, we can. I mean, is there a cookie on the top, or can we still pour Ooh, more into it? We can it? pour more. So we can do. We can add some more. Okay, we'll go back. Yeah, Maybe it's a try and clear clean it out, and then melt some more. Okay. Yeah. So we're getting ready for the second pour, and there you can see the nest, and they're going to pour more molten zinc in on top of it. So here comes our f Kevin Haight, who's got the crucible full of molten zinc, doing the second pour. Oh, you can really see it's igniting. Wow, you can see the flames coming off of it. It's going somewhere. Make sure the you want to put some a little, we put a little bit more on this side so it doesn't spill towards you. Yeah, it's going oh, down. Oh, yeah. It's going to burn by your foot, yes. Where? It just went blue. Oh, okay. So I think it's probably hard underneath. This might be it. Yeah, it's basically just under the surface there. Okay. So it's just yeah, oh, yeah, we got a blue one. Oh, yeah. yeah. So have you lost the channel? Okay. Um, I think so we're we... done with this one, so let's go to Fidoli now. Okay. So now we're following. That was a Pagana Mermex nest. Mm -hmm. Now we're walking up to another type of ant called Fidoli. So now he's pouring the molten zinc into a Fidoli nest. This is probably going to take a lot. Yeah. Well, that's a big colony. Big, big chamber. Wow, look at that. It's just totally absorbing it all. So now here comes Kevin. He's going to do the second pour on the Fidoli nest, so you can see. Oh, bubbling up. Whoa. It's really absorbing a lot. Yeah. Uh, so, so really I'm just going to keep pouring and hope that the pressure on top will force stuff down. It also, might actually drain eventually. If you get, go, there might be some holes over, yeah, right there. Oh, this is already filled, huh? Maybe, yeah. Or else it's hit a block. Yeah. It's hit the frozen yeah. stuff down. It might just be perfect. It might. They're a small ant. This might be the whole nest that be. you're getting right now. <laughs> Don't let anybody step on that. <laughs> so is it just air coming through this? Yeah. Way? And you know, moisture from the ants being boiled. <laughs> Jeez. And I who knows what else they might have down there? I shouldn't laugh at that, but. <laughs> They have seed harvesters overall. There could be a cache yeah. of seed down there. Yep. But this is actually nice. What you, what you want to see is the nest fill and then have like a nice mass, like what we call a cookie at the top. That's kind of a, a rough cookie, but it's still a cookie. Do you cut that off then eventually? Yeah, or? And, or you can use it to mount. Oh, to mount it. I see. Yeah. You see how the how the zinc is heavier or denser than the, than the dirt clods that are bumping yeah. and floating on the top? Yeah, they're riding on top of it. Exactly. Please. Do you pour on a third species of ant? This is Dory Mermex. And it's a tiny little hole. That's tricky. Yeah. Yeah, you almost have to have a funnel or something. And he's goes aiming for it. And the molten zinc is flowing. I don't see the hole anymore. I think it's right there. Yeah, most of the stuff's just going off. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, it doesn't, it's mostly just going off to the sides rather than actually going into the hole. Yeah. Is the hole, the entrance hole just not big enough? I, I mean, I couldn't even really see it. I mean, ideally it should have like a, like a lab one. I'll, I'll see it. 
So here now, um, Christina Krapik, who's a, is starting to excavate uh, the, the nest. And you can see here's the metal. And so she's digging out this square area on the side and it's going to slowly carefully start to excavate the Pagana Mermex nest. So now the ex the excavation is yeah, starting is to, to get yeah. going. Yeah. And you can see here she is. She's actually excavating on the top structure of the nest. And then we're digging a deep trench next to next to it. So we're excavating the Fidoli nest. Starting to excavate. Wow, so they're getting deeper and the structure is really becoming it's invisible. Going down, downward now. Yeah. Ooh. So, yeah, this is interesting. We're yeah, going to have to dig out behind it yeah. and support it totally. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. yep. So we've got to make the Fidoli pit deeper. You must be down like a meter and a half. How deep is that? We're going to be two meters before we know it. Yeah. <laughs> what are your impressions? Oh, it's really nice stuff. Yeah, it's really beautiful. It's really <laughs> yeah, <and> exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've just been sitting here with the camera. <laughs> what about you guys? What are your What are your impressions of this whole process? Awesome. It's kind of like it's kind of like art. It's physical labor. Yeah, and some you. some science. Yeah, it's good for you. Yes. <laughs> That's really cool. Oh, wow. So you guys are excavating that's the Dory so cool. Murmex nest. That's a really yeah. cool looking nest. Oh, that's oh, yeah. a beetle crop. Beetle. Whoa. Oh, sorry. That's Whoa. the thing we fed to the ants. Yeah, the beetle grub. And it, like went inside. Uh-huh. Look at that. That's a beautiful little nest. This, now this looks more like Jurassic Park. Than <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a paleontologist, like a toothbrush or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a tiny ant. How many how many millimeters is Dory Murmex? I mean, they're still wandering um, around here. Okay. Four or five millimeters. So pretty small, yeah. But their nest could be big, huh? This is our third species. We have a we had a Pergana Murmex nest, Fidoli, and then um, Dory Murmex. Hold it. I'll get off that cloud of dirt with my fingers. Yeah. Oh, for, or how about ready, you, do it? you do it? You're it's really pretty. It's partial, but it looks good. Yeah. yeah. They have these little chambers on top of it. Maybe you want to use like a pointy stick. I don't know. That's a cool one. Thank you, but yeah. Oh, yeah. I bet um, you get it mounted. Yeah. It's going to be really. It's going to be nice. Oh, okay. so Where was the thief ant? There's more of it up there. You found part of the thief ant nest? That's what. Um, oh, those Christina tiny little chambers. Saying, like, yeah, these tiny these little. These thin ones. little things, huh? And there's a better example of like a little chamber up there. Oh, that's really beautiful. I think you got a nice one. So this is the top of the nest, and you can see as it goes down all the different chambers. Stone. And they may have gotten the whole nest. So let's see here. We're gonna check on how. On the progress of the Fidoli nest excavation. Yeah, like for something like this, that four, four oh, it's going to be quite a trench. I, I thought oh, it was going to no. take forever with that little kiln. Uh, yeah. Wow. We have to fill this trench in so that no more horses die out here. You want the flat one for the root? I think it's so dull. Not sharpened. Yeah, here's the perfect tip. Make a square hole and sharpen your shovel and your trowel. Oh, very bright. Nice. It's on your track? Yeah. Okay. And all the charcoal to go on my truck. is finishing up our Fidoli nest cast excavation. This beautiful nest probably reaches more than three meters into the ground um, and contains uh, tens of thousands of ants. 
So um, this is a emergent uh, property of multiple individuals working together to build a structure. You can say this the extended phenotype of the organism. So it's something that they build from uh, simple rules. Mm -hmm. um, and each species has its own typical nest architecture. So you see Fidoli, earlier you saw Pagan Mermex and Dory Mermex, you see the differences. So thanks for being with us today and I hope you enjoy the beautiful intersection of art and nature. <laughs> That's wonderful, okay, very, very good. Okay, thank you so much. We really enjoyed ourselves, thank you. Thank you. And we'll leave tea as we enjoy our, our Taco Bell quesadillas. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, you guys will still be excavating, okay. All right, good luck.